We've got primer going on on this, and there's a run of frogs that I'm doing for Kevin Wilson. I've been trying to get to the finish line on these for a while. Um, played around with some frog patterns on other lures that just, what they weren't swoon right for me. So I'm going to drop them on these one knock wake baits. Wakes are perfect frog imitations to begin with because they're just subsurface. And this is one of my absolute favorite in the way of inexpensive blanks that you can purchase. I got these from Crossroads Cu Custom Tackle a little while back before all of the bull shad stuff started happening. Um, and I've just kind of had a few of these, but these are perfect for the Super Bass Hole Tournament that Kevin Wilson's putting on. So let's paint something cool today. This is gonna look like a hodgepodge to start out, but it's gonna make sense as we go. Uh, this is a pretty cool pattern and Kevin specifically requested this pattern. So we are going to get right into it. The colors we're gonna be using today, Detail Burnt Sienna. This beautiful, this is one of my favorites. I keep saying this, but Expired Blue Illustration, it's from the Bloodline series, Tim Gore at Createx. Really awesome paint. It's like this deep blue, not quite indigo, not quite purple. It's just a really nice midnight blue kind of color. We're also gonna be using a little bit of, I don't necessarily want pearlized purple on this, but maybe just a hint of some violet red. Definitely more white and just a little bit of spring green. I think the green I want to use is this tropical green. So we'll give that a little shake. We want to make sure all the paint is. See how the paint settles on the bottom sometimes? You really want to give that a good shake. And if you get um, if you get a chance to go to Hobby Lobby or Michaels or any place that sells either fairly large BBs or the glass, um, really small glass marbles. Put a couple in here. You got to make sure that they fit through this opening right here, but it's well worth it. So those are the colors. I know it's a little bit strange for a frog, but you're going to see how that all comes together as we put it on. I'm going to do all of these, but I'm going to do these two for you guys on camera today. But around the mouth area, we're going to do just a hint of this burnt sienna up into the face and instead of putting orange or anything on the throat everybody puts orange on the throat of a lure um, they think that that's really the only color that the bass see and it's not so get this out of the light and in here but you can see how bright this burnt sienna brownish it's got a little bit of orange hue in it um, but it stays fairly bright so just working that around the head. I might do just a little bit on the tail as well. And then we can mix some other colors in as we go. I'm not really flying off the cuff on this one. Um, I do have a pattern in mind that I've done similarly. And it was a specific pattern, again, that um, Kevin Wilson had requested. So we're going to be putting this together today for you guys. And then these are going to be shipped up to the west northwest coast so that he can give them away as part of the prize packages in the uh i, I don't know how many years he's been doing it three or four for the super bass hole online tournament which is super cool if you don't know anything about it or you're new to online tournament fishing I'm going to link Kevin's stuff all below. You can still get in. There's six different regions in the country that you can play along with. And it goes off the largest bass uh, for your specific region. And then I think there's the largest overall as a max prize winner. But uh, there are first place prizes available for six particular regions, which is really awesome. Kevin goes to a lot of hard work, and he's got some great people with him that work as admins on his uh, Facebook stuff and just some really awesome, awesome prize packages. So I'm going to link all this stuff below for you guys. And uh, by all means, if you can get out and go fishing, especially last year, man, everybody was just slammed with being so cooped up. Now I do still have, you see how that's kind of transferring. I do still have a little bit of that burnt sienna in the chamber. I'm not cleaning it out per se. 
just going to make a kind of a ring around the, the uh, lure here and then a couple of random spots on the head and back. And again, that's the tropical green. It's a nice, bright, juicy green. I love using that. And again, we're not going to do uh, not going to do a whole lot with iridescence. Frogs are not iridescent. They are very slick skinned and shiny in the water as they go by, but they don't have that pearl appearance that you get from fish scales. So I'm just dropping across the back here, just a real light touch. I've got my pressure down somewhere around 25. Just get that. And a couple of spots here. Now we are going to come back after we've got our colors on and accent a few places in white, which is always kind of fun. And to that, we're going to add just a little bit of that beautiful blue. Man, I love that blue. And we're going to kind of drop it around the eye here, both sides. There we go. Alright, I'm going to clean this chamber out, come right back in. Okay, so off camera, I did the same thing to these little doggies. Man, you guys really just can't see in that forward light. I apologize. Let's see if, there they are. You guys can see that better. The best effort has been made to try and lighten this room up, but unfortunately, that's not the answer either. So we're just gonna keep on pushing through. But you guys can see this a lot better. So now that all of this stuff is on and a semi-random... Okay, so some of you might be wondering, especially if you're new to the channel, why all the randomness? Why is this just like this all over the place? Like there's no real pattern. This is shading. This is not the pattern. This is just the background layer and it kind of gives a perception of depth to the bait when you start adding in your detail. Now one thing that will help put this in the background is one coat of pearl. So I'm going to really lightly spray. What, now I know we said in the beginning of this video there's no glitter, there's no pop on a frog. They're just kind of sleek and they have a shiny look to them but they don't have that pearlescent like scales are on fish. But to get this in the background I can't use an opaque white because all that will do is just bury this. But if I use a very thinly reduced pearlized white that's going to give enough transparency to this pattern to where it's going to drop all of this color that's random into the background and it's going to add to our detailing once we get started with that. So all we're doing is I've got a... I can't even give you the ratio of what I reduced it. Uh, I put about six drops of just regular 420 reducer this stuff right here into the chamber and then put about this much paint into the chamber so it's pretty thin hence the reason that you can still see the background really well but it really it kind of mutes it out we want to just give this a good coat And the one thing that it does more than anything else is it kind of gives the lines in these lit sprays of different color, it gives them less definition. It puts them in the background. It's not as well defined, the green and the blue. Now it just looks like shading and depth, which is exactly what you want.
heat set. Passing on that because I'm doing other tasks here at Bullshad as I wait. This tank is nasty and we have to occasionally drain it, clean it, refill it. Uh, I'm going to put some pump and cycling deal in here. I've got um, conditioner and occasionally I photograph Shad. I just pulled these guys out of the tank and now once it's completely redone we're going to put them back in. And now back to our regularly scheduled program. So somebody made the comment the other day last week on I think it was one of the threads on Facebook Swinbait Universe maybe about how things were starting to look cookie cutter because there's a lot of stencils out there that are they're available for everybody to use and it's a double-edged sword because yeah you're gonna have a lot of the same people doing the same things with the same baits and it's over and over and over and over again however you can still make things look really clever and really cool um, if you kind of mix it up a little bit. We're going to do that with these stencils from Brian Best over at Anarchy Model Stencil UK. Pretty sure that's not the right order. I do that all the time. Sorry, Brian. Um, he still loves me. With three. So these are the three that we've picked. We have the Reptile, which is a really cool one. This little micro dot, which is one of the comments that I think was about this little micro dot stencil. And then a little bit heavier of a mottled look, which I'm going to use, I think, some gold along the top. So this is a variety of tree frog that we're doing, and they are found very close to the water's edge in most of the United States. From north to south, you're always going to find various types of tree frogs, uh, bullfrogs. There's just a myriad of different types that are around and getting eaten consistently by bass. This is one of them. So we're going to start with some modeling and I'm going to do white stenciling and then I'm going to do gold stenciling and then we're going to do some detailing in black but I'm going to, you'll see how I'm able to tie more white into spraying different little sections and maybe even just a little bit of opaque lilac which is a very light, light, it's almost white um, when you look at it on here. Uh, the way it comes across as a detail color. It's not necessarily meant to be a de detail color, but it works really, really well against a darker background. So these are the three we're gonna use. This one, this one, and the micro dots. Yeah, everybody's using them, but they are super cool. And if you're a hobbyist and you're not doing it for a living, you're not selling them, you just wanna fish them yourself, or you're watching my channel because you wanna make some and fish them and maybe sell a few, Good on you. I don't care if you use micro dots like everybody else or not. I encourage it because it helps you practice and it helps be you become a better airbrush artist. So starting with these little micro dots, I'm going to do the cheek areas on two and not bore you with the other eight. Go ahead and set these up here. I've already got the other ones done for the first stencil off camera. Again, so as not to bore you guys to tears. So I'm just going to add a little bit of modeling. Face, tail area on both of these. Middle of the back. Middle of the back. Same areas on the other side. Kind of consistent with that. Details we get a little bit more consistent. Background and depth can be a little more random. That's sort of true for most of the stuff that I do. But again, it does not have to apply to everything that you do. Find your own rhythm. Always a big proponent of that. So now, you can see that we've got some good details on that. We're going to follow it up with a couple of underbelly areas. Most fish will look up. 
and this is just sort of a recognizable pattern for them so that they can see it. Now, we have that one on. And we don't need to go buck wild on it. I am going to add just a little bit of it on the top of the nose and the back. And I like doing that on the darker areas. It's a little bit more contrasty. going to add gold. Even though this is a true reptile pattern, this is a similar one. We're just going to go a couple areas down the sides in gold. And on the other side. Kind of in the middle, we want to give that real nice slick impression. Maybe a couple on top. There we have it. So I've added gold to the tops, the sides. There we go. And Mike's here. Hey Mike! <laughs> Two hours later. And we're back. So, while I am doing the tank cleaning today, I wanted to finish up the detail on this for you. Now we're going to put in, it's a tympanic membrane. It's sort of like a frog's ear. And we're going to kind of put it right over the edge of this gill plate. Now, I've got some detail black magenta loaded in. And we're just lightly going to put in that dot. Put it in on both sides of this. on the other one as well. And I'm going to do the same thing off camera with the other eight. Now that all the rest of these are done, there's one more part to this tympanic membrane and that is you kind of want to split the middle and just barely give it a little bit more because there is an obvious split in the tympanic membrane and it should look as natural as possible if you can. Just kind of get it right down the middle. just like that. Well folks, I don't know if you can see it way over there, but I've got the Braves game on. And in moving to Georgia, I have really tried to adopt the Atlanta Braves. It's the most painful process I think I've ever gone through in my life. Man, they're having a really rough start to this year. Okay, so now that we have the tympanic membrane, I know I've said that like five times. You should do shots every time I say it. Um, now we've got that done, I've got just a little bit of this um, black magenta left, and I'm going to just put a little bit of dark around the eyes. I'm pretty sure we're going to use yellow or green frog eyes, which I'm pretty excited about. But I want a really contrasty background. 
and I think giving them just a little bit of detail black magenta in this is going to be cool. For those of you just joining the show, we're doing a tree frog for Kevin. Actually, we're doing 10 um, for Kevin Wilson in the great north woods. <laughs> he's, he's up in, uh, in Washington State. And I'm just... I haven't been doing all of these on camera. I've just been doing two for you guys because I didn't want to bore you to tears, but this is a fairly quick process. Um, just putting some shading around the eye where the 3D eyeballs are going to go. And I've got some pretty killer stuff. I, these particular wake baits take 7 mil, so they're 7 millimeters. Um, most, I mean, you can put a, a smaller one in there, you can put a 6. It just, um, the seven millimeter fills it out. Muy bueno, much better. Okay, with the last bit of this, I'm actually gonna put it on the table. And I've got black, and I also have these Uniball Vision Elite in colors. These are the Deep Colors collection. So they come in, let me see if I can find them here. Come in packs of five. And the gold, and the purple are probably my favorites. And then they've got the blue, green, and red. The red is a very real deep red. And that's something we're probably not gonna need on this. But this gold is pretty cool. So all I'm doing is I'm just kinda doing a lining around the edges in a dot formation of this tympanic membrane. Do a shot. Just set it again. Okay. And then just a couple little areas. Just like that. These can be random. But you're just kind of defining some bumps and different things that you would see on the frog. So just here and there, just a little bit. Just a few random dots. Circular or semicircle patterns. Probably the best. And that's just something you want to do all the way around. You can, you can kind of vary going up and down. And this is just a little extra detail that I like to add. Especially if you're doing real cool customs for prize packs and stuff like that. You want to make sure that they feel special for winning. Just give them the best product you can turn over. I have got all the tape peeled off the bills. We've got all the detail work that I'm going to put on, on. And now, because I love Kevin, I love doing stuff with him for these for these tournaments. I want to do something really special with the eyes. And I use customs from time to time. Sometimes I use, you know, straight out of the box from wherever, from living living eyes, fish skulls, or. But for these. I really wanted to give him something special and I'm not going to do two eyes the same. I could. Um, I could use all dead meat customs here. Show you guys these up close. I've got two cameras going for this part of it because I want to show you how beautiful some of these custom eyes can get. This is Matt over at dead meat. I mean they're just stunning. And again like I said these take seven millimeter eyes and I have just a ton of really cool stuff. So I'm going to kind of mix it up. I also have some really beautiful, beautiful reptile eyes and frog eyes from uh, John over at Jetson. So if you guys want to take a gander at some of these beauties as well, these are also 7 millimeter. 
I mean, they're just, they're amazing. They're so pretty. So I'm going to mix it up between those two, and I'm going to show you the eyes when I'm finished. You guys know how to put on eyes. So that's not anything that I have to actually tell you how to do. It's just a little bit of super glue and put the eyes in and you're good to go. Now one thing, one real quick tip, if you're not used to doing frogs or reptiles, frogs on occasion will have a lateral line here as opposed to having a vertical stripe up and down. Sometimes frogs will have that lateral horizontal pupil. So I'm going to, again, mix it up a little bit here for these, for these frogs, and I'm going to show you the reveal after we're set. Uniball Vision Elite Medium Point. Works really well, light fast, doesn't bleed. Uniball Vision Elite Medium Point. Okay, folks, we are going to show you the reveal on the eyes. I ended up, unfortunately, having to go with just John's eyes over at Jetson because mats were just a little bit too big for the eye socket. I thought the sevens would be good. Actually, John's sevens were a bit of a tight fit as well, although we did make them work. So I'm just going to go ahead and show you these beautiful eyes. No two are alike on these. Kevin, I really hope that you like these, and I hope that your participants and winners do as well. Really, really excited to get this project done for you. I know that you have been super, super patient with me, as have the rest of my customers. It has been crazy since I've gotten here to Georgia and Bullshed. Aren't these just like the most beautiful eyes? Um, so anyways, I wanted to, as I'm showing you guys these, thank you so much for hanging out on the channel. I hope I was able to teach you a couple of things today. Um, Uniball Vision Elite, I'll say it again. I will say it again. Uniball Vision Elite is the pen that I use to sign my work. Look at these beautiful eyes. John, you've knocked it out of the park again. I love reserving these eyes for special occasions like this where I can really kind of showcase them for people that may not have ever seen them before. So thank you guys for hanging out on the channel. I will talk to you guys in the next video. Cheers and happy casting from Jekyll Bates. I will give you the reveal after the clear coat. Clear coat is going to, it's just a quick dip. You guys saw a clear coat on the last one. I'm not going to waste your time with it this time. I'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye.